Before the days of Ron Greenwood, West Ham United had never in their history won a major trophy. That all changed during his time in his 13 years at the Upton Park hot seat. He took them to their first major trophies and also developed talent that would ultimately conquer the world. This is a story of Ron Greenwood, West Ham's greatest ever manager. Ron Greenwood was born in Lancashire on the 11th of November 1921 and moved to London when he was 10 years old. He left school to become a sign writer and served in the RAF during the Second World War. After a spell as an apprentice of Chelsea, he went on to join Bradford Park Avenue as a centre-half, making 59 appearances over the next four seasons and helped them to an FA Cup victory over Arsenal in 1948. He had moved to Brentford in 1949 for a fee of £9,500, making 147 appearances before going back to Chelsea, winning the first division in 1955. He finished his career with Fulham and soon went into coaching. He coached Eastbourne United as well as the England youth team, making Bobby Moore their captain. He would go on to spend a few years as an assistant manager at Arsenal. In 1961, he got his big break. He was headhunted by West Ham chairman Reg Pratt to replace the outgoing Ted Fenton as manager of the Hammers. Being reunited with Bobby Moore, Greenwood knew he had a player he could build his side around, and he also brought in Johnny Byrne, converted Jeff Hurst from a wing half to centre forward, and gave a debut to a young Martin Peters. Greenwood would phone up England manager Walter Winterbottom and encourage him to give Moore a chance for England. Greenwood's spell started promisingly as West Ham finished in 8th place. The next season, he made Bobby Moore captain of the club as Greenwood felt he was a natural leader. Greenwood was starting to build an exciting team and although West Ham finished in 14th place in the 63-64 season, they would still have a special day out. The Hammers defeated Charlton, Leighton Orient, Swindon, Burnley and Manchester United to seal a spot in the FA Cup final against Preston North End. It would be their second FA Cup final and a golden opportunity to seal their first major trophy. It would be one of the great cup finals. Bobby Moore led his West Ham team onto the Wembley turf and although Preston took the lead 10 minutes in, John Sissons levelled for the Hammers only moments later. Preston would retake the lead to go in 2-1 ahead at half time. In the 52nd minute, a Jeff Hurst header bounced off the bar and onto the Preston keeper before trickling over the line. As the game dragged on into its dying minutes, both sides were exhausted and it would only take one moment to decide where the cup was going. In the dying seconds, Peter Brabrook had the ball on the right-hand side and floated across into the box. There to meet it was Ronnie Boyce. Boyce's header flew into the bottom corner to win the FA Cup. West Ham finally had their first major honour. Over 40 years on from losing the famous White Horse final, they finally had the cup for themselves. Bobby Moore climbed the steps and lifted the FA Cup in the air. It was West Ham's first step into a greater world. The victory meant the next campaign, West Ham would taste European football for the first time. They started their European Cup Winners' Cup campaign by knocking out Belgian side Ghent, and then knocked out Sparta Prague. A 6-4 aggregate win over Swiss side Luisan Sports took them to the semi-final, where they defeated Real Tharagotha 3-2 over the two legs. For the second consecutive year, West Ham would be at Wembley for a final, this time taking on 1860 Munich. A large portion of the game passed by goalless, but strikes from Alan Seeley in the 70th and 72nd minutes won the European Cup Winners' Cup for the Hammers. They were only the second British club to win a European trophy. Ron Greenwood had masterminded two trophies in two seasons for a club with no major honours before he came. They would come close to a third, but lost the 1966 League Cup final. Later in 66, Bobby Moore had a contract dispute with West Ham, and Moore let his contract expire. However, upon joining the England squad, Moore realised that a non-contracted player could not play for England, Alf Ramsey forced Moore back to Upton Park to sign a new contract. Whilst Greenwood was not England manager in 66, the three Lions earned a huge debt of gratitude for their victory. Jeff Hurst got a hat-trick in the final, with Martin Peters netting two, 
and Bobby Moore led England to victory as captain. All three of these players had been developed into superstars by Greenwood, and it is unlikely England would have succeeded without their West Ham core. West Ham struggled following this, however, finishing the next season in 16th place, despite hopes being high. A breakdown in the relationship of Bobby Moore and Ron Greenwood followed over the next few years, with Moore feeling Greenwood only knew how to communicate with elite players, and Greenwood feeling Moore didn't respect his authority. Greenwood would continue to bring in players that would become West Ham heroes, purchasing Billy Bonds from Charlton Athletic in 1967, and also bringing through talents such as Trevor Brooking, Frank Lampard Sr and Harry Redknapp. However, many saw Greenwood's last few years in charge of West Ham as disappointing, and there were feelings that they could have done better with the talent on show. West Ham were not helped by the drinking culture at the club. In the 70-71 season, it emerged that three West Ham players in Bobby Moore, Jimmy Greaves and Brian Deere had gone out drinking the night before the 4-0 loss to Blackpool. Greenwood was furious and felt that Moore was setting a bad example for the young players, saying that Moore had hurt him. Greenwood remained though and made a big statement in 1972 when he became the first English club manager to field three black players in a league game in the form of Clyde Best, Addy Coker and Clive Charles. Following an 18th place finish in the league in 1974, Greenwood felt he had done all he could with the squad and handed over the reins to John Lyle, who won the FA Cup in his first season, whilst Greenwood became the club's general manager for three years. Greenwood still had a strong reputation as a coach, and following the resignation of Don Revius England manager, Ron Greenwood took his place in 1977. It was the end of 16 years at Upton Park. Greenwood took England to Euro 1980, but they were knocked out at the group stage. He then led them to their first World Cup campaign in 12 years in 1982. England would go unbeaten, but still crashed out at the group stage, following 0-0 draws of West Germany and Spain. Greenwood once again helped the fight against racism by playing the first black player for England, Viv Anderson, in 1978. Greenwood stated that he didn't care what colour skin the player had, as long as they were good enough, he would pick them. Ron Greenwood retired from management after leaving the England job in 1982. He would spend much of his post-playing career as an analyst on BBC Radio. Ron Greenwood died of a heart attack on the 9th of February 2006 at the age of 84 after suffering from Alzheimer's for many years. West Ham won their first game after his passing 3-0. After his death, he was inducted into the English Football Hall of Fame and is also in the FA and LMA Halls of Fame. Without Ron Greenwood, West Ham would be a very different club. He took them to heights they had not experienced before and helped give the club a plethora of legends that are still admired today, as well as playing a part in England conquering the world. While some may feel he could have achieved more, he did things with the hammers that nobody had done previously, which is why he will always be a West Ham legend. <laughs>